broadcast. I'm Niket Karunaratna. A very good evening to you. I'm Sharifa Tahir. Let's take a look at the headlines. Measures to import 40 million eggs for the festive season. The Sabah public rally to give impetus to the president's mission will be held in Kuliapitiya tomorrow. The killer of a Sri Lankan family in Canada has been remanded. Many details of the gruesome killing from the relatives. A new bridge built in place of the one destroyed by floods has been vested with the people. The local chef of the golden birthday cake of Bollywood actress Lily Urshi. E-cigarettes are the latest killer of you. Five persons have been killed in Gaza after being hit by airdrop aid boxes with faulty parachutes. Sri Lanka wins the T20 tournament with a hat-trick by Nuan Tushar. On to those and other stories in detail now. The State Trading General Corporation says that plans are underway to import 40 million eggs for the festive season. Chairman of the corporation, Arsiri Valisundra, says that the relevant import orders have already been provided to the suppliers. The aim is to overcome any shortage of eggs during the New Year season. It has been decided to sell an imported egg to the consumers at the price of 43 rupees. The Lanka Satosa is in charge of importing this commodity item. Steps have also been taken to maintain buffer stocks in the event of occurrence of any egg shortage in the market. Chairman of the corporation, Asari Vali Sundar, said that cost of production of a single egg is between 20 to 23 rupees. He adds that therefore consumer is able to purchase an egg at a price less than 50 rupees in the market. The chairman further said that however, as soon as the egg imports are halted, the local selling price would increase rapidly. Therefore, importing of eggs is a mechanism to control exorbitant price increase and a required number of eggs could be purchased by Lanka Sotosa. Chairman Valisundara further said that they hope to import eggs in the future festive seasons as well with the objective of controlling prices. One million eggs are being dispatched to Lanka Sotosa sales outlets on a daily basis. He adds that it is also hoped to issue around two million eggs daily to the market during the period of the festival. Meanwhile, the Sri Lanka Poultry Producers Association requests egg manufacturers to supply eggs at minimum prices during the festive season. President of the Sri Lanka Poultry Producers Association, Ajit Gunasekar, said that the cost of raw material for poultry farming has been on the decline recently. He has requested egg manufacturers to work with maximum efficiency and to release eggs to the market at a fair price. It has also been reported that an egg is currently being sold in many parts of the island at prices ranging from 55 to 57 rupees. Three persons were killed and two others were seriously injured in a road accident in Rambava and Radhapura. The police say that a group returning after watching a musical concert met with the accident around 2.30 a.m. today. It has also been reported that a jeep travelling towards Anradhapura from Rambava hit the victims and fled. Three of the five injured admitted to Rambava Hospital had died. The deceased were of the ages of 14, 19 and 21 years and residents of Pihimbia Golava and Rambava. The police have conducted investigations in search of the missing jeep. Two more persons have succumbed to their injuries in a road accident in Biriskama in Koswatta on the high-level road last night. A woman injured in the accident was admitted to the Colombo National Hospital. The police say that the accident had occurred as a result of the bursting of a tyre of a lorry laden with a stock of cement, hitting an oncoming motorcycle. The father and son of the same family were killed in the collision. Four vehicles clashed with each other at the Boralla Junction when a highly speeding vehicle hit a private bus parked on the roadway and a van and a motor car travelling along the road and at that time were also damaged due to the incident. A lorry loaded with a stock of iron clashed with a parking vehicle near a restaurant in Galanigama on the Bandaragama Horana Road. The police is that CCTV footage has recorded how the vehicle stormed into nearby restaurant due to the failure of the driver to control the brakes.
Another road accident took place in Donangoda in the southern highway at dawn today. Nobody was injured in the accident when luxury motor car hit the rear of a container truck. The Sabava public rally organized by the United National Party will take place at the Kulyapitiya Urban Council grounds tomorrow. This would become the first public meeting to be attended by President Ranil Vikramasinghe upon assuming duties in the post of presidency. The meeting is scheduled to commence at 2 p.m. The UNP deputy leader has inspected the venue today. He said on this occasion that the objective of the meeting is to add strength to the president's initiative to resolve the disputes problems of the country. He also said that it was the president who had taken charge of the bankrupt and ungovernable country and provided solutions to the crisis. Deputy leader of the UNP, Akila Viraj Karyavasam, said that the United National Party meeting to explain and spread awareness to the people on certain political campaigns which have been organized with the intention of misguiding the people will start tomorrow morning. He has recalled the country was in an ungovernable state in the recent past and there was no leadership. He added that the present president has accepted the responsibility at the moment and gradually moved the country out of difficulties. Now, Minister Pavitra Vanyarachi says that the previous government, which was built up with the massive people's mandate, was toppled through a conspiracy. She was addressing a meeting of the Dasabala Sena program in the Ahaliyagoda electorate. Minister Pavitra Varnyarachi said that when the opposition had realized that the government could not be defeated, they had devised an economic crisis by telling the overseas countries to remit funds to Sri Lanka. They wanted to shut down airports and harbors. As a result, the country was puctures and broke down their images. Parliamentarian Namal Rajapaksha said that if the JVP and the SJB says that the Pohotua is an irrelevant party, then he inquired as to why they are asking who would be the Pohotua candidate. He further said that the reason behind the inquiries is that they are aware that the Pohotua party has the strongest political mechanism. Now, the suspect believed to have been responsible for the killing of six Sri Lankan nationals, including five members of the same family in Canada, has been remanded till next Thursday. Meanwhile, the foreign ministry says measures are underway to extend whatever relief possible to the affected family and their relatives in Sri Lanka. The Ottawa family killed and the lone Six Sri Lankans, including five members in the same family, were brutally murdered at a location called Bar Heaven in the suburbs of Ottawa City in Canada last Wednesday. The suspect taken into police custody in this connection is a 19-year-old youth named Fabrio de Souza. He was produced before the courts last Thursday. Canadian media reports quoting judiciary sources said that the suspect had refrained from making any statements. The Algonquin University, where Fabrio had his education, in a communique said that the suspect was engaged in academic activities for the last time in the winter session of the last year. The university has confirmed that the suspect was the registered student at the institution. Meanwhile, a woman named Anusha de Souza, the aunt of the suspect, had issued a statement to the Canadian Global News Media Institute. Quiet, like never violent, never had any issues growing up. He was like so pampered boy. Police investigations into the homicide are taking place continuously. Police spokesman in Bar Heaven said the killing had been carried out using a sharp object. The police communique says the bodies of the victims will be handed over to the relatives of the family only after the completion of the post-mortems.
The High Commission officials have visited the surviving father and husband of the victims at the hospital. The ministry is in communication with the family members in Sri Lanka and is facilitating their request with the relevant Canadian authorities through the Sri Lankan High Commission while respecting their privacy. The funeral rites will be conducted according to the wishes of the victims' families in due course following the release of the human remains after autopsy. The Consular Affairs Division of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is working closely with the High Commission in Ottawa to undertake all necessary measures to assist the families of the victims in fulfilling necessary formalities. Mayor of Ottawa, Mark Sutcliffe, said that this was an unbelievable incident. It's heartbreaking, Todd. Uh, uh, as a father, uh, as the mayor of the city of my hometown, it's, it's just so devastating to hear a guy who were very young ages, from two and a half months old to seven years old, and as a parent and as a member of the community, it's just so shocking to hear that news and so troubling and disturbing. Uh, and I know that's the reaction that a lot of people in the community are having. It's, it's very difficult to process this news and to understand what happened. And I think everyone is in shock and disbelief. And so we have to pull together as a community in the face of this grief and sadness. The Bohil Bridge in Kadayal and Anaval was vested with the general public today. The bridge has been rebuilt at the same location where the previous bridge was completely destroyed by floods. The bridge collapsed due to floods last year. The Pasbagya Koralia Pradesh Sabha has spent 45 million rupees for the reconstruction of the new bridge. Minister Dr. Bandula Gunavardhana, Chairman of the Navalapitiya Regional Development Committee and Parliamentarian Mahindananda Alutkamage were also present at the opening ceremony. <laughs> Minister of Transport, Highways and Mass Media Dr. Bandula Gunavardhana said that he is not aware of any politician in the area other than MP Mahindananda Alutkamage who felt the misery of the people who were burdened due to the loss of the bridge. It was the untiring efforts of the parliamentarian that they received the funds through the courtesy of the President Ranil Vikramasinghe for the bridge reconstruction. The major topic in India these days is not exporting eggs to Sri Lanka, but rather on eggs being made using eggs. These are not mere confectionery items, they are actually called golden cakes with a value exceeding 30 million rupees in Indian currency. Although Sri Lanka did not provide gold for cake producing, the youth who turned out this marvellous creation is from Sri Lanka. The name of the Bollywood actress and super Indian cinema star Urshi Rutail is highly placed in the Indian cinema. She is popular not only as a cinema and television artist but also as a business person and a social activist. She is a popular character whose name is enmeshed in the hearts of the Indian people. Urshi Rutail has celebrated her birthday recently. She was reported to have visited International City in Dubai in search of a culinary artist who was capable of making an appropriate cake for the unique event. Her order was taken over by the Amazon Cake Institute. The birthday cake was turned out using 24 karat gold. According to Indian media, the value of the items was more than 30 million rupees. <laughs> Indian superstar had come across this amazing entrepreneur through the dream fulfilling Dubai program produced by the news division of the SLRC and telecast over the national TV. Urshi Rutel has extended her gratitude to the Sri Lanka Rupavahini Corporation for helping her to find the excellent cake producer. Prasanna Rajaguru, head of the Amazon Cake UAE, said that they are thankful to the news division of the Sri Lanka Rupavahini Corporation for elevating their status. At a time when the Indian economic expansion is gobbling the world, a naval person named Prasanna, attached to the Sri Lankan Navy Band, had 
placed Sri Lankan identity above in the world by becoming the most favorite cake maker. Prasanna Rajagur added that the Indian Media Institute has received information after giving him telephone calls to him. He further said that he is proud to find the Amazon Cake Institute having the ability to perform such an onerous task. We'll be back with more local stories after a break. Ulahilayum, Arivarium, Vetikulachayum, Birvida Mika Aval, Avade Kakaway, Makal, Bangi, and Banitam, Derivasi, a Pata Vipulik, Visayda Parisigal. Live from the National News Studio, Sri Lanka. Welcome back and we continue with more stories here at home. Senior Presidential Advisor on National Security and Chief of Presidential Staff, Sagala Ratnayaka says that the future of the country is being shaped in the interest of the children. He reiterates that President Ranil Vikramasinghe has taken charge of the responsibility to rebuild the nation. Sagala Ratnayaka has made these remarks on the occasion of the distribution of school equipment to 2,000 children in Suduwalla in Maradada. The program has been organized on a concept of United National Party organizer for the Colombo Central Region, Kitsiri Rajapaksa. Senior Presidential Advisor on National Security and Chief of Presidential Staff Sagala Ratnayaka said that the country has been brought to a stable state. Yet the people are experiencing difficulties. He added that the government has implemented many programs to lighten the burdens inflicted upon the masses. The UNP National Organizer has recalled that in the beginning, the maximum benefits provided to some of the recipients was only 4,000 rupees, but the government has increased the allowance up to 15,000 rupees. Previously, there were only 1.5 million Samurdi beneficiaries. He added that the government has provided Aswasama benefit to 1.7 million people. He has acknowledged that these achievements are not complacent in nature. The Department of Excise says a rapid increase in the consumption of e-cigarettes has been witnessed among school children and youth in many parts of the island. The department says the adults and parents should take special precautions to rescue children as they could become addicted to drugs speedily. A survey conducted by the department says addiction has spread among school children in many areas. Sale of e-cigarettes is mostly conducted via online. The contraband is being brought to the island via sea and air routes. MG Gunasiri, Commissioner General of Excise, said that a wristwatch has been devised in a manner to facilitate the e-cigarette smoking. The watch could be charged. The most dangerous feature is that they have been added with flavorings. These cigarettes could be refilled. A student in a school in Ratnapura has introduced to other students and charged 20 rupees for each swallows of smoke. Any person who becomes aware of such an incident should inform the telephone number 1919. He added that existing laws are adequate to arrest any person connected to such illicit activities. The outer nature of the cigarette does not look or identify as a cigarette. Further information regarding the cigarette could be received through telephone numbers 1913 of the Department of Excise. The e-cigarette usage has been banned in the United States. The World Health Organization has also prescribed the cigarette, stating it as a dangerous threat to school-going children and youth, which distorts their mentality.
Now, Minister Manushanane Akara says that the Garusaru program of the government will bring employees in different fields under the labor law and provide them with all the benefits. He made these remarks at the inauguration mobile service today. The two-day mobile service organized by the Ministries of Labour and Foreign Employment got underway at the Vihera Stadium in Kurunagala. Tributes were paid to the children of expatriate families and the participants were enlightened on vocational training, labour laws and human trafficking. Minister Manushanane Akara said that new labour laws will be formulated under the Garusaru program. The Employment Act has been included to secure professional honour. Under the program media personnel, three-wheel drivers, preschool teachers and other professions will come under the labour laws. We now move on to some local news in brief. Funeral of veteran announcer and actress Ramya Vanigasekara will take place at the General Cemetery Boralla tomorrow evening. The body lies at a private funeral parlour in Boralla. It will be brought to the premises of the Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation tomorrow afternoon for the general public to pay their last respects. Ramya Ita Kapavimin Unanduin Analas Tamange Kare Itukala Nivedikawa Ramya Pita Nativim Vedikawa Tevagema Pirina Tashetra the Ragana Beri Padua Kalimala Magani Ramya Ramagani Kalipala The London Kavi Felicitation Magazine was unveiled at the Mahavali Centre yesterday. It was compiled by Anuro Hergoda to felicitate Professor Sunil Ariratna and Dr. Nanda Malini. Well, that's it on Local Stories. We'll be back with news overseas. Ukar gasu babis. Ungal ke transfer bandir ke. Rambo tholai bilai. Puri chinnya school ke. Para walas. Adu mar school tani. People have been killed and ten injured in Gaza when they were hit by a pallet of aid parachuted into the territory as part of a humanitarian airdrop. Witnesses the accident happened on Friday morning near the coastal refugee camp known as Al Shati, one of the most devastated parts of Gaza, after a parachute attached to the pallet failed to deploy properly and the parcel fell on a group of men, teenagers and younger children hoping to obtain food and other supplies. Several hundred thousand people are facing famine in northern Gaza where they live among the ruins of their homes without sewage, electricity or any other basic services. The emergency room's head nurse said that the casualties were taken to Gaza City's Al-Shifa Hospital. Millions of vines are being destroyed in Australia and tens of millions more must be pulled up to rein in overproduction that has crushed grape prices and threatens the livelihoods of growers and vine makers. Falling consumption of wine worldwide has hit Australia particularly hard as demand shrinks fastest for the cheaper reds that are its biggest products and in China the market it has relied on for growth until recent years. The world's fifth largest exporter of wine had more than 2 billion litres or about 
two years worth of production in short storage in mid-2023. The most recent figures show and some is a spoiling as owners rush to dispose of it at any price. About two-thirds of Australia's wine grapes are grown by vine growing techniques brought by Italian migrants arriving around the 1950s. Nearby, the remains of 1.1 million vines that was once comprised one of Australia's largest vineyards were piled in heaps of gnarled and twisted wood as far as the eye could see when china blocked imports during a political dispute back in 2020 australia lost its biggest wine export market by value and unlike europe it offers farmers no financial aid to help them destroy wines and excess wine And on sports news, Sri Lanka beat Bangladesh by 28 runs in the third T20 match of the current series played at Shillet. With this victory, Sri Lanka has secured the overall championship of the tournament. The Bangladesh team, having won the toss, invited Sri Lanka's team to bat first. Accordingly, Sri Lanka team has scored 174 runs for the loss of seven wickets. Kusal Mendes hit 86 runs, facing 55 deliveries. His score included six sixes and six boundaries. Taskin Ahmed took two wickets for 25 runs. The Bangladesh inning was restricted to 146 runs. Rishad Hassan scored 53 runs and Taskin Ahmed 31 runs. A significant feature has been Nuwantu Shara recording a hat-trick with an overall haul of five wickets. Man of the match was Nuwantu Shara. The first of the three upcoming one-day matches is scheduled to be conducted on the 13th of this month. Series. The Battle of the Blues cricket encounter between Royal College Colombo and St. Thomas's College Mount Lavinia was concluded without a result at the SSC grounds in Colombo today. The three-day big match organized for the 145th occasion commenced on the 7th of this month. The St. Thomas's team opened up the innings on first day to score 297 runs. The Royal team came to bat on the second day and scored 234 runs for the loss of seven wickets. Royal continued their innings on the third day today as well and declared when the score was at 278 runs for the loss of nine wickets. The highest scorer for the Royal team was captain Sinet Jayavardhana who hit 92 runs. The most successful Thomian bowler was Ashen Pereira who captured five wickets at 74 runs. The St. Thomas's team in their second innings had scored 229 runs for the loss of four wickets. Mahit Pereira has recorded Rumiru Pereira of Royal College took two wickets for 86 runs. The man of the match was Royal team captain Sinet Jayavardhana. The best bowler and the best fielder were Hassan Pereira of St. Thomas's College, Mount Lavinia. And that's all the news for tonight. Join us again at the same time tomorrow. Good night. Good night.